Good evening, Papua New Guinea, and welcome to another episode of Business PNG. New developments and the rapid growth in the financial system have given rise to issues that need to be addressed. This includes consumer protection for financial service consumers. The issue of consumer protection has become one of the key topics being discussed in forums both domestically and internationally, and focuses on addressing the well-being of the consumers or depositors. Long lines at the bank, multiple follow-up steps, and physical barriers often make banking in Papua New Guinea a difficult task for consumers. In a two-day symposium hosted by the Bank of Papua New Guinea, the Center for Excellence in Financial Inclusion, and the Alliance for Financial Inclusion, stakeholders from the financial sector gathered to discuss policy regulations, enforcement, and consumer protection challenges. The bank, along with its stakeholders, has been pushing for the agenda of consumer protection and market conduct in the country. The aim is to promote transparency and full disclosure and to address common consumer protection issues affecting the Papua New Guinean consumer. The symposium is uh, it's about the, uh, developing a framework for consumer protection, financial consumer protection and uh, market conduct. Um, this is an area that uh, since our independence in Papua New Guinea, um, we, have, we don't have a legal framework uh, that will help govern uh, the area of uh, consumer protection, uh, financial consumer empowerment, and uh, market conduct in Papua New Guinea. Consumer protection is a group of laws and organizations designed to ensure the rights of consumers as well as fair trade, competition, and accurate information in the marketplace. The laws are designed to prevent businesses that engage in fraud or specified unfair practices from gaining an advantage over competitors. The conference is set the pace for stakeholders to get together and develop a framework that is uh, uh, that, that, that will help the consumers in the long run in terms of uh, consumer complaints because uh, at the moment we don't have the framework. Mm -hmm. What we have is the consumer protection legislation that is uh, under the IEEC Act. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we take on board consumers and you know try to uh, reach a redress by going through the banks and financial institutions but this one is more specifically for the financial institution consumer protection. Mm -hmm. So in the long run as soon as this framework is in place that will definitely help and relieve most of the consumers that will always have complaints about the banks and fees and charges and all these issues that come. So I think this is timely. The 21st century has brought with it new formats of payment, such as mobile payment through application, crowdfunding, and pay pass systems where one can simply tap their card onto an FPOS machine with no PIN code needed. These new forms of payment come with risks as well, and risk mitigation is essential to combat fraud. We have the hacks acts like the, the IEEC Act for general goods and services, then you have the Central Bank Act and the functions of the Central Bank Act that covers the regulation of the financial sector and also the payment system. Uh, under the Central Bank Act we have powers to issue uh, standards both for prudential uh, requirements and non-prudential non requirements like consumer protection falls under non-prudential requirements and in most central banks, they, they see that it's not part of prudential requirements, so they don't go into that area. But you see, as, we, as, we, as f the financial system becomes complicated, you introduce new products, a lot of consumers will be affected in the process and they will be disadvantaged significantly. Welcome back. Amongst the challenges of doing business in the country, there are some striving entrepreneurs who aim to succeed and propel their business from strength to strength. In this Entrepreneur Engage segment, our correspondent Bethany Harriman and Maisen Hungito from MTV's Lay Bureau travels up to Goroka to meet a family of furniture makers. We present Ultimate Furniture. Thank you for joining us in this Business PNG segment. We are in Goroka with Nancy and Tony Basse, owner and operators of Ultimate Furniture. Now, we're sitting on some of their sets here and they're going to tell us about their business and how they got into it. My name is Tony Basse. I'm from Medellin. We are operating this uh, furniture business just recently. Uh, starting February. We came into operation in February, mid-February. 
we have a range of products in terms of dark lounges. Um, we have so far we have three designs that have already come into market. We have a rotary lounge, which is this design with the buttons on, and we have that uh, that liberty to give names because uh, these are our very own product. And our designs yes. on the surface of the lounges are our own, so we have the privilege to give names to the sets that are completed and sent out for market. I'm from a health background, she's uh, also working along that line with the developing, humanitarian developing communities. And one of the opportunity or the, that we see that we can tap into in uh, help improve the living of standard in across Papua New Guinea is not necessarily the, the high class. We are targeting the middle range income and us and to the lower cost as much as possible with them. So, you know, by having a, a decent lounge of this nature in a house, it directly um, helps improve the standard of living in a house setting. And when you have a good lounge, it will encourage people to be clean and it gives the, you know, they practice hygiene practice in the houses. So in a way, we indirectly help promote a healthy living standard in our way. We give value to the household. And also we had um, inspiration from his younger brother, who is Emmanuel Basse. He's here with us in Goroka. Um, he's a very crafted, talented young Papua New Guinean who has been um, engaged with other bigger companies in the upholstery section. Um, he's gone through technical college and has, um, has, has a talent, I'd say talent in doing this. He can pick up a design or he can just look at something and you know, he can bring it out to form and life. So he was doing those and then when he quitted his job or when you know, he left, um, we felt that it would be a waste for him to have that and not bring it to life again because he's producing really beautiful things. So with that, um, we came together and decided that we would support him and make it a family business. So with our different talents, with you know him uh, being a management position, me being a community person talking and looking at people's living, and Manuel, Emmanuel being this talented person, we said maybe we can start something with our different creativities. So that was how we decided that to invest with our um, personal resources. And what we have in hand, that's what we believed in, and we really believed in the products. Like, so we said, no, we wouldn't go out and get loans, or we wouldn't you know, do something to put better and pressure on us, but we'll just start with what we have currently and see how we go. So after investing in the machinery and other things, in terms of the ovides, um, we said we'll start with the first couch. And that was when we started into the uh, February, February this year. This year. So with that, we said no more. We won't put any more money into it, but we'll see how it picks up itself. Mm -hmm. So with the first couch, okay, from that money, we went into another two, because we could afford more material, like two plus one. So from the two material, we said, okay, now, so now we're up to six, and that was from the first couch. Mm -hmm. So apart from our own investment in the machinery, no matter plus. So we said no more, we'll put it, we'll just believe in the product and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, with the equipment, actually, we bought it over time. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just an uh, overnight uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. We started in 2013, we started getting some electrical equipment, like, one at a time. Mm -hmm. And I think in February, yes, we, we went ahead with the, the compressor and other big things. So we spent over 12000 at the most in acquiring all our equipment. In profits, no, we haven't uh, made any profits that we are just recouping, recouping. our the, the initial startup capital that we expended in getting these things out. But a startup in the business it's quite a challenge uh, actually in terms of marketing, exposure. Uh, we can produce our materials but one of the the fa the factor that is being a big challenge to us is the, you know, the local materials are uh, they are highly priced and they're expensive. So some of the things that we get, uh, normally we cannot go any further below the price we're charging because of the price that they've been dictated to us through the materials that we get. In terms of the SME, like what you said, um, for us I'd say 
like we're starting. Uh, if you were already in a business, you'd be interested in what the policy is and how it can support you and how you can tap into it. So for us as um, starters, that we didn't use the policy or if there was opportunity or if there was any that came with the policy, SME policy, we've never used it or we haven't um, tapped into that. But for us, we've just started from, you know, from what Highlands and on our inspiration. So it'd be interesting to see how that can support us. Our plans is, I think, to supply, be our own supplier, be our own supplier totally. If it has to be um, real estate people, if it has to be to make a showroom for ourselves, this is our big dream down the line. And we know that it doesn't take much. And for us, with our products, we will go. So what, we, what we're just waiting for is, you know, to build up the capital from our sales and then we can go. And I think saying that, we've also identified that um, um, rents and land and things like that are again, you know, challenges. You have to have land or a government land that is on lease. So you have to, you know, identify a good space around town with a building to do those things. Otherwise, all the buildings around the place that we've looked around has more or less been and then with the rents you have to be already established to be in there but this is not going to be a barrier to us because we totally believe in these products. Um, our dream down the line would be still have our own showroom and be the supplier of these nice products in Papua New Guinea but um, with a price that is aff affordable to every other people who has a nice house and want to live comfortably yes we have the product there and our added value to this market would be we are Papua New Guinea and so we will do this thing in Papua New Guinea, so you have the chance to give your own color, your design, tailor-made, custom-made to your liking, and you fit it in your house and live. We are dreaming of uh, still part of work in progress that will eventually get the pop must be set up shop there. But our you know ultimate dream is to set up our own uh, show, display our own product, and you know, we can create a. Employment for many skilled people like uh, Imano, so you can continue to produce uh, quality stuff like this. And mind you, this product um, we are using hardwood and hard materials, mm -hmm. so it can last for up to 10 years. The only the cover we sourced it from Lay, the major importers in Lay, mm -hmm. uh, established companies. But any other product like the foam, some we get it from Lay, some we buy it from our local shops. shops here in Goroka. All the timbers are sourced locally from our own uh, timber yards here in Goroka. And the plywoods and everything that we used in, uh, in our products, yes, in our frames too, especially. But uh, the products that we choose, uh, we select them by ourselves. And we ensure they are you know, of highest quality. And normally the, our timber yards, we select uh, hardwood from the coast. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we we choose between woods from the highlands and the coast. Um, the coast um, has more value than the, last the hard ones. Yeah, last longer. So when we go to timber yards, we select we hand pick the timbers for the frames. Yeah, sawn from the coast. We use those materials in our products. So regardless of the size or how hobbies a person is, how big. The frame can hold and it can hold for the next 10 years. In the highlands, I think Eastern Islands Goroka is where we started and we can supply highlands regionally. And we can, we have a dream of uh, setting up shop in Mount Again to supply the, you know, products the beyond Mount Highlands, Mount, yes. Beyond Mount Again. But Lay definitely will, will still set up in Lay, given the industrial hub of the country and also. The port services way can be easier to you know ship out ship to other out provinces, to other coastal provinces, and Indian Islands for that matter. Yeah, so. we've, yeah we've had um, requests from as far as Lihir, um, so open data. Open data. Our our challenge was we just started and we needed to do the research on shipping and you know things like that. But yes, Lay is would be the ideal place apart from Goroka in terms of the you know mainland Papua New Guinea. Like for me I was I was very encouraged when uh, people had that first impression that uh, we were importing these products. Mm -hmm. But when they get to realize that it's a backyard product, you know, it gives them all the reason to come back for the second time and even uh, ask for offers or ask for specifications and 
we produce them. So, like this thing, it is telling me that uh, we Papua New Guineans really have the the talent, and we do produce quality stuff. But uh, you know, we need that opportunity to really showcase our quality and our talent in a way that will benefit every other Papua New Guinea at a very good pricing. I hope our dream will come true at the end of the day because uh, we want to improve the standard of living generally across Papua New Guinea. Yes. Here are some business stories making headlines this week. PNG's largest cocoa exporter, Eggmark, has recorded the highest cocoa volume for the first time in eight years. Over 200 metric tons of wet bean cocoa was received from smallholder cocoa farmers over the last seven days, with more still coming. Eggmark says this gives an indication that the battle against the cocoa pod borer infestation in East New Britain province is eventually coming to an end. Edwin Fidelis reports from Cocopo. At the Eggmax Cocoa Fermentry at Tallinna, just a few kilometers outside of Kokopo town, vehicles loaded with wet bean cocoa are waiting to be weighed. Price, price too, yeah, company buy good, now I'm a bell ball man, please. This warehouse that has been locked for nearly eight years was reopened last week to create space to cater to the cocoa beans that are coming in abundance. So for the first time since uh, 2008, to reopen the States to building to be able to handle the volumes of cocoa that uh, are being delivered. Since last week, Eggmark has recorded a total of 200 kilograms of wet cocoa beans purchased from farmers. That's equivalent to about 1,008 dry bean cocoa bags once it's processed. Its total value, half a million kina. Our daily purchase is still getting higher and higher. And I really expect more to come because we can call it as a mini plus cocoa from that month. But we will continue till June. Most of these cocoa are coming from small older growers who contributed about 60% of the total cocoa production for the province. A kilogram of clean bean is fetching two kina, while unclean beans are fetching one kina fifty per kilogram. Eggmark says the cocoa industry is making a comeback in a big way, and much of this good news has been attributed to the ongoing awareness and cocoa port borer management programs by cocoa agencies that have been carried out in villages to encourage farmers not to give up hope in cocoa farming. And since last week, their efforts are slowly paying off. All stakeholders where we play work promoting cacao, CCIPNC, UNRI, IATP, Look, continue low working my awareness, now uh, training, low improving my uh, production. East New Britain is one of the largest cocoa producing provinces in the country, but the infestation of the cocoa port disease had downplayed the industry, making it unattractive to farmers, and it pushed the cocoa industry in the province to a grinding halt. This year, its glory days are slowly returning. While the business looked good for small older farmers, Eggmark says it is also looking at meeting its export demand from overseas cocoa buyers that have not been met in previous years. As Papua New Guinea forges forward into the 21st century, the internet economy is increasingly becoming the next revolution of global trade and commerce. This is why the PNG APEC Business Advisory Council saw the importance of bringing the e-commerce in SME Summit to PNG. The summit was held yesterday concurrently with the second ABAC meeting in Port Moresby. An impressive turnout at the International Convention Center today as members of the Small to Medium Enterprise or SME sector attended the e-commerce summit. APEC PNG Ambassador Ivan Pomaleo said e-commerce was important in advancing SMEs to the global value chains. He added it was in line with the recently launched PNG SME policy in advocating the use of ICT in growing and enhancing SMEs. The presentations focused on cross-border e-commerce and its huge success in China, the world's second largest economy. Diane Wang from ABEC China and a founder and chief executive officer of DHGate.com which is the world's leading online marketplace for wholesale consumer products, said the benefits of cross-border e-commerce were immense. ABEC PNG hopes that SMEs in PNG take away from the summit 
and look at new ways of doing things. ABEC said the use of technology at this level can create new value and wealth by marketing PNG's products via e-commerce. Landowners of Europa Airport in the autonomous region of Bougainville have welcomed the second airline operator PNG Air into Pieta. Last Thursday, the third new ATB aircraft flew to Buka and Europa on its maiden flight to the autonomous region of Bougainville. PNG's maiden flight into the autonomous region of Bougainville, especially to Kieta, was historical. Following the Europa Airport reopening in 2014, on Thursday this week, the new ATR aircraft, Alpha Tango Bravo, flew to Boca and Europa. It was welcomed in the Bougainville way. <music> Upon its arrival at Europa Airport, PNG Air fulfilled its customary obligation as the second airline operator into this national airport. Chief Commercial Officer Paul Abbott thanked land owners for accepting the service and said PNG will provide affordable cost. And our, our intention there is to link Booker and Europa with uh, regular air services in both directions so that will help the uh, hopefully the transport of people around Bougainville, um, it'll help business development, um, it'll help tourism development. Autonomous Bougainville Government Civil Aviation Minister Luke Carraston assured airline operators that security issues will not be compromised. And we look forward to a uh, a uh, much uh, uh, brighter future with uh, your company, uh, PNG Air. Village Chief John Tarun on behalf of landowners welcomed the service into Europa. Now we are brought uh, by local man by production, by star production. Me hoping for it. When the driver will come up, sit down and talk to you while look at walk by for it. For locals with more services resuming, after the civil war is a blessing. So man by got cheapest way lot travel go down the lake, cave in, most be rabal to all got all by got good places lot travel to. Give me plus now plus dead yellow. People will give me service since they are out of fire put even open. And if you need come. The decision comes from the people to which plane to hope on. And I guess that the, the uh, minds of the people will be free to make decisions on whatever plane they, they choose to fly. And that's all from us tonight. For more business news, if you'd like to view this episode again, visit MTV Online at the URL at the bottom of the screen. Or for up-to-the-minute business news and updates, like our page on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at BusinessPNG or on Tumblr. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Girari and this was Business PNG.